Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, hast thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Let me just hold hands with someone and begin to pray in the spirit. Just hold hands with someone and begin to pray in the spirit. Hold hands with someone and begin to pray in the spirit. Just make contact. Jaka 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 Oh, like a bride waiting for her groom. Even so, come. Even so, come. Even so, come. Kapara kota shabrandi geratu sata. Zeka te prateka te bereka te pras kata bara da bara da bara. Bena na ma na ma so ta na 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 ma ni na 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 ma. Bena ma na mo so na na ma ni na 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 na. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. That is something that will lead heaven to this place. Keep praying. Shabara katun so brandi gera poshi brandi. 
Keep praying, keep praying. Keep Hallelujah. We are going to pray one more time. If you are sick in your body, just lay your hands there. There is a strong healing anointing in this place right now. You are sick anywhere in your body. Lay your hands. Lay your hands. I see the power of God about to touch people in a few minutes. Miracles of healing. The Lord is healing migraine headache right now. There are people suffering from intense migraine headache. The power of God is touching you right now. Right now. Right now, right now, I'm seeing, um, I'm seeing a lady having severe, like, like menstrual cramps, severe menstrual cramps. Right now, as I speak, the power of God is touching, 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 touching. That pain leaves right now. That pain leaves right now. There is a spirit that has been walking with a lady. You literally feel as if there is a man walking by your side. That spirit is leaving you right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. That spirit is leaving you right now. This is Zion, the city of the Lord. There's someone, your voice, for a while, your voice has been unable to be clear. It's like there's something hooking you. 
you're going to feel like fire on your throat right now right now and your voice will come back to normal right now right now hotness of the body that's what the lord is telling me father we give you all the glory hotness of the body hotness of the body is living right now there is someone you brought your mother your mother is in this place she's been unable to sleep for a long time she can't even sleep but right now the power of god is coming upon her and that devil is giving way right now 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 there's someone you have a boil like a boil in your nose right inside your nose the power of god is touching it not only will it be healed it will disappear right away you will touch it and you will not feel anything right now the lord is touching the lord is touching the lord is touching i'm seeing a river in the realm of the spirit that's what i'm seeing flowing into this place a river is a river of miracles many will be swept by that river is a river that flows from the love and the throne of god it's a river bringing healing bringing healing bringing healing there are there are miracles going on healing miracles Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a spectacular miracle that the Lord wants to do for many people. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a group of people in the realm of the spirit. You used to hear God in profound dimensions. But from the beginning of this year, something happened to your hearing and it's an attack from the gate of hell now please pay attention i'm speaking by the spirit it's an attack from darkness upon your hearing and it's like something has closed you some of you don't even know you are part of it i'm about to pray for you because that that prophetic dimension you need it to hear what i want to teach you tonight you need it there are some dimensions of spiritual communication that you cannot understand it scientifically and the lord is asking me to pray Therefore, Father, I stretch my hands on your people. Every gate of the prophetic that has been closed, every gate, every gate, the hearing ear, let that grace be released right now. The hearing ear, the hearing ear, Sata Kaparata. Many of you will hear the sound of angels instantly, instantly, inside, outside, those following on our social media platform. The Lord is opening. The Lord is opening prophetic dimensions. The sharing of the spirit. Authentic sharing. Not nonsense. An authentic sharing. Shakataba. Sheketekata. Rakatapakotosia. For some of you it is restoration. 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 What happened to your hearing? That you no longer hear the sounds of the spirit. Like fire is coming on the ears of people. Fire, 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 I see fire falling on people. Fire, a restoration of hearing, a restoration of hearing, a restoration of hearing. Lift your hands. There are people here, your dreams used to be prophetic, but it was hard. And my God, you said, something is happening to your spirit, man. The hand of God. Is coming upon your spirit man the hand of God coming upon your spirit man right now dreams 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 shaka patata stretch dreams where you will understand the counsel of God in the visions of the night the counsel of God in the visions of the night the counsel of God in the visions of the night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last thing I'll pray for before we sit down is sensitivity. Listen, let me tell you. If you lack sensitivity in this season and in this time, you will never be able to be in sync 
with what God is saying. Sensitivity is like breathing in the realm of the spirit. To be able to understand the impulses of the spirit and align yourself with what the spirit is doing and saying. He said the sons of Issachar, they had an understanding of the time and they knew what Israel ought to do. I want to pray for you. There is a grace that makes men sensitive. Many of us used to be sensitive, especially our sisters. Something has happened to your sensitivity. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. This is a mountain of the Lord's house. Where grace is sufficient. Grace is sufficient. Right now, I stretch my hands. May that grace begin to fall on men and women. Let it fall, let it fall. Sensitivity. Discernment. Sensitivity. Discernment. Kapakatalapokosopa. Sensitivity. Discernment. To the speakings of the spirit. Sensitivity. Discernment. To the speakings of the spirit. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. You were mighty on your throne. Hey, mighty on your throne. You were mighty in this world. Mighty on your throne. You were mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. You were mighty in this world. Mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your we pray that you go ahead and do everything you intend for us to experience tonight right beyond our dimensions right beyond our perceptions right beyond our yieldedness and oh God I pray that you activate strange things in the lives of people strange things in the lives of people please sit down carefully if you can tonight will be a night of strange impartations if you can't just sit down and let your heart be open let your spirit be sensitive no carelessness no distraction please koinonia is a place of impartation you need impartation to rise and step into your prophetic destiny there are times that certain things need to be activated nothing can cover for noise and stories you must come into the reality of certain experiences and impartation is one of the platforms that can bring you into those realities. Once again, I welcome everyone. This is Koinonia. Tonight is a night of strange impartations. And there is a reason why God is doing it. There is a reason why God is bringing us to this dimension of impartations. It's not just for nothing. Listen, in the course of my teaching, I'll be very brief tonight. But in the course of my teachings, there will be different kinds of anointings just coming in. You get this in Koinonia. Koinonia is a place where things are activated. And so when your word comes, it will come upon you. Yours is just to be sensitive. As I teach, there will be dispensing of graces. Dispensing of graces. Be sensitive. Don't just hear what I'm saying. A time will come. Yours will come upon you. So it's going to be a noisy meeting. Don't worry. You will hear what I'm saying. But as I teach, people will receive things. Will receive things. Inside, outside, everywhere. You will receive things.
Shabratu sakuratu saprita shidahari. Dembroto subrakata baria. Listen. The church must pay the price for a genuine anointing that will really be able to bring God to the scene. The church must pay the price for a genuine, authentic anointing that will be able to bring true results for people. The only way we can become a revelation of the Christ, I'm telling you this, is to contend for a dimension in the spirit that affords us the privilege of hosting superior dimensions of the presence and the power of God. Talk is cheap. It's easy to make a lot of noise in the body of Christ. It's easy to stand upon many doctrinal and theological dissertations communicating the things that we believe should be. But in the final analysis, people need to experience the reality of the kingdom. And I think this is where a lot of we pastors have not done justice for people. A lot of us are speaking prophets. A lot of us are mighty pastors and apostles and prophets and bishops. We can communicate spiritual reality. But the challenge is when it comes to the practical demonstration of the essence of our communication. We try to create all kinds of theological excuses. So there are so many things we teach that God is. There are so many things we teach that God can do. There are so many realities we, we whet the appetite of God's people by opening them up to the possibilities that can be in the spirit. But it is so frustrating when people's appetites are to the apex, yet we sustain the power and the life to experientially draw them into those experiences. So we teach on healing. We teach on different kinds of healing different dimensions of healing and then in the final analysis the sick person still goes back sick the cancer patient still goes back with, with their cancers we are happy about dispensing theologically arranged communications but the bible says listen the bible tells us that the gospel listen it's not just about the excellency of speech. Right? But the demonstration of power. To the end that the faith of people will not be founded upon the wisdom of men. But upon the power of God. No matter what you say about God. If you cannot bring him to the scene for me to relate with his might. You have wasted my time. I may applaud you for your intelligence and your ability to be flawless in your research but let me tell you something in the final analysis people need to be transformed demons are not a theory they are real sicknesses are not a theory they are real oppression is not a theory it is real poverty is not a theory it is real only preaching largely are theories blessed is he who comes in the name of our God? Blessed is He who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is He who comes in the name of our God. Hallelujah. The Lord showed me a vision a few days ago. And in that vision, I saw so many people in the church weary and tired that's what i saw in the vision including pastors i saw people seated and stranded no message because everything to be preached have been preached i saw members frustrated and humiliated and the lord began to reveal to me that it is a strategy please pay attention it's a prophetic teaching tonight it's a strategy by the kingdom of darkness because when you study when you listen to my teaching why revivals fail i shared with you dear 
a strategy with which Satan uses to defeat many believers. Satan will never strike you at your point of strength. He knows that all men are human. Although we are divine, there is a human component to us. So the moment you are doing the work of the kingdom, advancing the purposes of the kingdom, fervent in prayer, strong in the word, the devil will not attack you. He knows that there is one thing that is common to all men. It's called exhaustion. The reality of our humanity. That no matter how powerful you are, no matter how anointed you are, a time must come when the reality of your humanity will meet up with you. It is at that point that men are separated from the boys. It is at that point that only those who sustain a system in the spirit to continue will stand. I saw that vision. I saw faces I recognized and I could not believe that such great men could be weary. Now you see, a man of God can be weary and you will not know. Because don't mistake in the grace upon a man to dispense truth and his personal growth and progress. They are two different things. I can be as dry and weary as whatever. But when I stand upon this pulpit, the anointing that comes with my office will make me act so flawless you will not know that I'm at the verge of giving up. Are we together? Most times, we mistake in the grace and the unction that accompanies the office of a man to mean that because that grace looks ever fresh, ever flowing in power, that it necessarily means the person is highly motivated and happy. No, there are times I've been so tired, physically tired, going for meetings. And I, I can sometimes it looks like I can't stand for 15 minutes, but the moment I hold that mic, I no longer become Joshua Selman. An apostolic anointing comes and I can stand for hours. Now, you may mistake in my strength to mean that I am not weak. Do you know sometimes when I get back home, even to eat becomes a problem? Are we together? So I saw weariness in that vision. I saw many people gassing out in prayer. Literally like a meter just diminishing. I saw people gassing out in their world level. And one of the areas that I saw people crying is the area of not getting results financially and otherwise. It was frustrating people. I saw quarrels between people. Fathers, mothers, different people. I saw pastors fighting themselves. And I was wondering, what is the meaning of all this nonsense? And the Lord told me, this is what the devil wants to bring. He's taking advantage of the economic tide that is sweeping the nations as a tool. And he wants to wreak havoc in the lives of people. Are we together? Part of the advantages of a true apostolic ministry is to have an eye that sees and the ability to perceive the impulses of the spirit part time and communicate to people the realities that are the emphasis of God for that moment. That's why we pray for perception. Because there are many of us, if your perception were alive, you would have picked the signal. Let me tell you something. It's important to gauge your spiritual growth. Don't let men clap you into spiritual mediocrity. What are you an MOG for when you cannot perceive the impulses of the spirit? What are you a campus fellowship president for? Or a pastor or an apostle? When the things of the spirit happen, discussions are going on in the realm of the spirit and your presence cannot be registered because you have not sustained an ability to rise beyond your flesh and understand the speakings of the spirit. Hallelujah. Ministry is not all about preaching, but the ability to perceive the impulses of people. When God makes you a leader, he commits unto you the destinies of people. It's your responsibility now to be in sync with the spirit. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 says, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower. It says, and I will see what the Lord will say. Not hear what he will say. See, perceive, conceive what he's saying. When I saw this, my heart really broke. Especially when I saw faces I could recognize. 
I saw that people had gas out. Truly. Mothers who used to have a very strong prayer altar. I saw the thing going down. Usually it starts through carelessness. Here and there. Even if you don't pray one week, it doesn't matter. There's grace for me, I'll come again. And then before you know it, completely void of power. And you know the interesting thing? No matter how bad you are, the devil will never strike you. He's smart. If he strikes you, you will go for a retreat very fast. And you will come back. So he will allow you to keep moving. There is a threshold level. It's like a gauge in the spirit. You keep going down, he will not strike keep going down one day he will aim at you and if not for the mercy of god and the prophetic he will hit you bad blessed is he who comes in the name of our god blessed is he who comes in the name of our god blessed is he who can Hallelujah. I will share with you three keys the Lord revealed to me. That if not managed, will strengthen the power of darkness to cause the havoc that it plans to cause. Take note of this month, July. You see, this month, July, there is, there is intense warfare going on in the realm of the spirit. Those who are sensitive, no. Those who are not sensitive, just assume and move carelessly and foolishly until they become victims. This month, mark this month, July, you see, is a month of intense spiritual building. You need to build capacity for the months to come. Victory is assured, but the strength of many will be tested in the months to come. You will see this happen. The strength of men of God, the strength of people their their spiritual capacity will be tested and only those who have built fortification in the spirit the bible says for us to redeem the time take advantage of the time are we together so the devil is attacking the prayer lives of people dramatically you see he's not attacking it by stopping you from praying i will show you the things the first thing that the devil is using to sabotage the prophetic advancement of believers and the church listen is exhaustion the reality of the weariness of our bodies the reality of that weariness exhaustion psychological exhaustion physical exhaustion are we together so when people gas out they come to a point where it no longer makes sense to wait upon the lord and trust the lord because many hopes have been disappointed many dreams seemingly look like they are shattered people look at their experience versus their prophecy and it does not match and so many are fainting including the great ones who should stand to strengthen many people and there's nothing to be embarrassed there that's why god is opening us up to it so that we will rise is god blessing us exhaustion weariness that fatigue that spiritual fatigue where you want to study your bible and you just look at it and it looks like a burden you want to open your bible and study it looks like a burden you buy books but you don't read them you buy dvds but you can't watch them there seems to be a spirit that takes advantage of our humanity and our weariness. So, you are buying books. You are buying tapes. You are downloading messages. Those around will think you are taking advantage of them. But you know that it's been a long time since you made contact with these resources. Not because you are not of God. It's called weariness. Exhaustion. Even the young men shall faint. And the youth will utterly fall says that's the first thing that i saw that the devil is taking advantage of to destroy people just destroy people just destroy people 
The second thing that the Lord revealed to me is financial limitation. Write it down. I saw a lot of people whose focus had been distracted and the reason was because there were no resources. I saw God, churches, groups, people, even people who used to participate actively in the house of God, prayer meetings, prayer groups, the reality of the stress and strain that lack of finances brings. A lot of people started asking themselves questions. Look, we're, we're humans. Let's go and, and, and solve our family needs first. And it's a plot. It's a plot by darkness. Are we together? Where believers go to pray and they can't pray because of financial weariness. And even if they pray, the entire circumference of their prayer is lamentation and a plea for open heavens. You may not realize it, but it's a strategy. It's a strategy. Listen, let me tell you something. Satan weighs the governments of nations like a treasure on a balance and manipulates them according to his desire. This thing called mammon is Satan's weapon of mass destruction. Mammon. Mammon. That spirit, the only spirit that Jesus taught that you can worship either him or that spirit. He never said Satan. He said you cannot serve two masters. So in any way, your servanthood must be registered. Either to God or to mammon. Hallelujah. In that vision, I saw people losing jobs. Companies downsizing people. There are not many times you hear me speak prophetically like this. But you write it and see. I saw it happening to people. Are we together? Several people confused. Even, do you know that pastors and churches went down financially because their members didn't have the means you know offerings and tithes and all of that and it was a weariness to people and subtly the teachings about spiritual growth the teachings about empowerment intimacy encounter began to diminish because the pastors were forced to have to continue talking about finances it became as though it was the only key that would have to keep the people coming to the churches Are we together? When I saw this thing, my heart dropped. And I said, my God, what is this? You have to do something about this nonsense. Because the devil wants to take advantage of the economic tide that is sweeping Africa. And that spirit that is sweeping Nigeria. That bitterness, that offense. Many people no longer pay attention to God. You meet somebody and talk to him about spiritual growth. And the person will even tell you to go away. Why? Because... We have said it unapologetically in this ministry that when your finances is not secured, it will affect your spiritual life. There's no confusion about it. I hope you believe what I'm sharing with you. Oh, please, you better do. Please, you better do. Because it will happen. The third thing I saw was... It's like flies. You know how house flies? Like a swarm of flies. Now there are times I've seen these things prophetically and I've shared them here over. But I saw a swarm of flies just coming across regions. Ah, and I looked at it and the Lord took my mind back to the plague. One of the plague that happened in the days of Moses. When those, those swarm of flies came around and began to consume people. And I had in my spirit the ministry of the devourer. Manifesting as sicknesses. Manifesting as tragic events. And ultimately death. I saw this thing. Rampant manifestation of mysterious sicknesses. That cannot be diagnosed in hospitals. They will check you with machines and say nothing is, is happening. I said, you see, who comes in the name of our God? 
Blessed are you, for you come in the name of our God. I'm not a prophet of doom. But I saw the tears in Nigeria in the month of September. It was almost unbearable. I'm not, just listen to me, I've not finished preaching. I'm not a prophet of doom. But I saw it was bad. Economically and otherwise. It was, it was like this country was completely clueless and at a point of a mess. I saw people being um, what do they call it? Laid off from work. Completely laid off. Husbands, wives, laid off. Their services were no longer needed. In different sectors, including government sectors. They downsized people. Because they needed to accommodate what was happening. Are we together? I saw an increase in crime rate. Theft. Stealing. Including stealing people. Not just stealing things, stealing people. Why is God revealing this? To scare you? No. God is revealing this to strengthen you. He will never bring a prophecy without a strategy. Just keep following. There is always an exemption for the church. But the problem most times is we don't pay attention. There are people who hear what I'm saying now. I'm, I'm sorry, especially for elderly people. They just shut down and say, all these idiots talking again. And then until it happens, and then we become victims of situations and circumstances. You see, let me tell you something. Prophecy, prophecy in its purest form was designed not just to give people, to make people privy to something that will happen the most important part of prophecy is the strategy for exemption not what will happen the strategy for exemption any true prophet that brings a word from the lord especially if it's a word that is on the negative side if it came from god god must be able to speak to his people and say this is a strategy you can choose it especially for certain things that are written judgments you cannot pray them away but there is a system like the flood of noah there was a system that was built called the ark like the passing of the angel of death upon egypt the mystery of the blood of the lamb and the passover right it was the mystery of exemption but you see the church we we have this ugly mentality which came from a misguided understanding of what the new testament teaches i can relate with god i don't need to hear anybody leave me alone if he's so god will speak to me if god has not spoken to me i will not listen let me tell you something listen i was teaching the school of ministry students our spiritual growth is based on our personal relationship with the lord jesus christ but the advancement of the kingdom is based on covenants you have to understand this your spiritual growth and my spiritual growth is based on my personal encounter my knowledge of who god is his ways and that's how i grow in the old testament it used to be through prophets and mediums but now the bible tells us that jesus has come as a mediator he's opened a new and living way to all of us we can now access god directly in terms of spiritual growth but the advancement of god's kingdom is not general god finds men and enters a covenant with those men to represent his dealings in a particular dimension and every time god wants to deal with a territory in that dimension it must come through those channels they are called spiritual tribes they represent the communication of god's purposes in a dimension so when you talk about faith every time god wants to bring his speakings as regards the word of faith there are spiritual channels he has entered a personal covenant with and align them to be able to communicate his purposes in that respect bishop oyedeko kenneth copeland you can trace that spiritual tribe and they represent his communications in that regard are we together there are other dimensions 
when the spirit of revival wants to fall upon the nation there are people who represent the spiritual tribe that communicates that reality to the world it's not general so your tapping into that possibility only becomes on the strength of your alignment with what God is doing. When God wants to come in in the area of finances and prosperity, I know that everyone will be blessed, but there are people who have a personal covenant with God that represent his speakings in that regard. You will never ignore their ministry and hear the current dealings of the spirit as far as that is concerned. So the advancement of the kingdom it's not based on personal relationship. It's based on covenant. God calls a man called Abraham. The first man in the Bible who showed us that men can walk by faith with God. Are we together? He is God's type of faith. The only reason why we can tap into the possibilities of God as far as the blessing is concerned is on the strength of the covenant that God entered with one man called Abraham. Are we together? When God wanted to salvage a nation, he used one man called Moses. Entered a personal covenant with Moses that afforded Moses an unusual access to God beyond his personal spiritual growth because Moses himself did not make the cut to the promised land. How be it based on that covenant to an extent that although Moses may have failed spiritually in the book of Jude, an angel came to carry his body and Satan still wanted the dead body because they represent systems. They are not just human beings. They are systems. Elijah was a man who represented God's system. God's covenant of reformation. God's covenant of, of um, forerunning revivals. He's called Elijah the Tishbite. Are we together? So, by the time you allow people to begin to corrupt your mind and say, don't make it look like only some people can hear God. No, the idea is not a show of superiority. The idea is an election by grace where men have become like trees. They are like spiritual vines and your connection to them is how you are able to tap into certain possibilities. I've shared it with us here. Abraham gave birth to Ishmael with Hagar. Is that true? Hagar was crying. Ishmael was crying. But the Bible says God heard the voice of the young lad. Not the voice of Hagar. Why? Because when God looked at Ishmael, he saw Abraham and received and saw the covenant. God, more often times to say, he blessed Solomon for the sake of his father, David. Are we together? When the kingdom was about to be advanced after Christ came, he got 12 men, entered a personal covenant with them. Listen, let me tell you, there is a difference between those apostles and us. We are equal in Christ, but they were men who entered a certain kind of covenant with God that represented the advancement of God's kingdom. If Satan killed all those 12 apostles, the kingdom could not be advanced. Because it was through them that it would be spread. That's why God protected them. Angels had to come and open prisons to force them to go out. Are we together? One man called John, the beloved, had a personal understanding. It was his personal covenant with God that granted him access to show us the revelation, the apocalypse, the unfolding of prophecy. There are still men like that on the earth. There are not many, but there are. In fact, the system of God's electing these men is always in twelves. There's no time to teach you on that. That God's apostolic governing system is always in twelves. So in, in regions, you will always find this number, twelve. The apostolic spiritual governing council of God. They may not even know themselves. But they represent God's order of activities. Are we together? But you see, when the devil wants to deceive you, he will bring pride. 
and make you look like I can access the throne of God by myself. I, am, I don't need to hear anything. Even when God is giving a word of caution, most times we don't listen and we say, no, 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 no. I'm, nobody should do this and that and that. And then, you know, um, I don't even want to go into that, that teaching because it will take our whole time. As you know, I love the body of Christ. I am the last person who will fight the body of Christ. I love the body of Christ and I love the different dimensions of spiritual operation. But then I am always quick to attack imbalances, especially when they get to a level where they can corrupt the authenticity of the work of believers. The moment an imbalance gets so bad that it can bring you out of spiritual alignment, it calls for concern. Are we together? And one of it is, of course, as we know, the concept of grace. Are we together now? Now, when you understand the concept of grace and you isolate it with respect to other things that God is doing, it becomes an error. Grace as a doctrine on its own is an error. It only makes sense when you add it together and you piece it together with every other thing God is doing. When you study the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, theologically speaking, contains the highest church truth. Are we together? Where Apostle Paul was teaching the church, he was giving them certain doctrines, the entire scope of a Christian experience. Six chapters, which were a communication of the entire activities of the believer. So it starts, theologically speaking, with what we call sitting, right? You've, heard, you've read that and many of you have heard it in different messages. It was that revelation came by a man called Watchman Nee. Watchman Nee was the, the, the apostle that God used to communicate the realities of redemption in a very balanced and authentic way to the body of Christ. And so that position of sitting, the Bible starts in the book of Ephesians teaching us how, in fact, when it starts in chapter 1, it never talks about us, it talks about Christ. And all that he has done when you start reading chapter 2 it now brings us into the scene right we are now raised up with Christ so the revelation of God's grace is seen in chapter 1 and 2 and it is true that the foundation of a believers life is predicated upon the grace of God there are certain things that we can never have ourselves like righteousness it is impossible for anybody to have righteousness by himself. The Bible says the best of our righteousness is as filthy rags. And do not confuse righteousness and uprightness. They are not the same. Righteousness and uprightness are not the same. Righteousness is a gift from God. Uprightness is our response, the advantage, our, our work of faith. I'm just giving us, are, are you getting blessed? I just want to establish a few things before we continue it's very very important so the bible starts teaching us on the grace of god and all the possibilities that come with that grace all that christ had done for us in his death his burial his resurrection and his ascension into heaven in fact it was on the strength of that that paul began to teach in chapter in verse 17 he said for this cause I have a passion for you understanding this. This is the foundation of your victory in Christ. And for this cause, I, Paul, bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you, right? The spirit of revelation, you know, and understanding that your eyes being enlightened or flooded with light, that you may know certain things. One is the hope of your calling. And then, you know, the power that raised Christ that was exalted when Christ was raised from the dead, you know, and, and all of that. And Paul begins to speak. He knew that the church needs to know that. But Paul did not just walk there. He didn't stop there. He began to talk about what is called theologically our walk of faith. Right? Character. Now you taking advantage of the grace of God. I told you there are two dimensions to the grace of God. There is the grace of God as unmerited access and there is the grace of God as power to live like Christ. They are all called grace. Don't just confuse them. Grace does not just mean what God has done and we receive by faith. There is a dimension of grace that represents everything Christ has done that we could not do. And he gave it to us. We receive it by faith. But there is a dimension of grace that empowers us to do we will do, but it's not by our strength. 
Are we together? And then he wraps up the book of Ephesians with what is called the, the you know, uh, standing and then our, our walk and then, you know, sitting and standing. Then he talks of spiritual warfare. Our ability to contend against powers and principalities. And listen, every doctrine that must build a believer, please hear me. Every doctrine that must build a believer must sustain all these components. Whenever there is a deviation from this pattern, it will lead to error. If you try to teach people how to do warfare, how to do character, and you forget the grace of God, you will lead them into error and legalism. Are we together? When you try to bring, isolate the doctrine of holiness without giving men the foundation of faith, you will lead to self-righteousness, which does not hold any weight in the spirit. And so it must be in that order. The first thing believers must understand about God is not warfare, it's the grace of God. And that's encapsulated in what we call the gospel of salvation. A revelation of the substitutionary work of uh, uh, Jesus Christ, which is a reflection of the love of the Father. So when we see that grace, then our walking right now by faith is our own participation that's called the gospel of the kingdom. Our reward in gratitude and honor for that sacrifice for us. And then our standing, it says, having done all to stand, stand. Now, let me tell you something. The part of this truth you ignore is the part the devil will use to destroy your life. You can't choose sitting as it were grace you can't choose kingdom just like that and isolate it you can't choose deliverance just like that there's a series on it and you can get it after the service it's called the full gospel where all these doctrines were examined one by one there are imperfections there are imbalances to the end that the bride of christ will become perfect he said come and i will show you the lamb's wife he said and he showed me a city equal in length equal in breadth equal in height and part of the possibilities in the kingdom is the foundation of the apostles and the prophets christ himself being the chief cornerstone god stations these men so that they can communicate the speakings of the spirit and it is that same order of god's system that was mimicked by the antichrist system when you read the book of revelations from uh, uh, chapter 13 and the rest the bible tells us that satan empowered the beast the beast will now empower the false prophets the same order the same way god empowers his apostles and prophets to communicate certain things satan empowers the beast who empowers the false prophets and then they continue carrying out their agenda so there is a system spiritual growth is not haphazard you don't choose how you want it's not even just how your pastor said so there is an irrefutable pattern that has not changed it did not change just because um god jesus christ came and died for us no it's an eternal pattern it was carved out of who god is not what he's doing are we together There are people who believe in miracles, but they do not believe in the prophetic and the apostolic. That lapse is Satan's authorization in their life. There are people who do not believe in the gift of the spirit, but they are well-meaning people. That lapse is Satan's, you know, advantage in their life. There are people, for instance, who believe in grace, but they may not believe in holiness and righteousness and all of that, and Satan takes advantage of it. There are people who believe in deliverance but may not believe in the grace of God. And Satan takes advantage and they are forever fighting every and anything. The key is not exemption. The key is balance. Everybody say balance. Say it again, balance. The key is balance. Because all of these things are components of the same system. Hallelujah. And so I want you to believe the prophetic is real. It is still functional. It did not die with the New Testament. The prophetic is real. Now I know that here and there people may have exaggerated certain dimensions of it. But it's not enough reason for us to throw the baby and the bad water. Lives can be rescued 
when we understand what God is saying. And the Bible says, He that hears, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. So if he's talking to one person, he's talking to the ecclesia, the church. Hallelujah. Pray one minute and say, Lord, I hear what you are saying. I'm not rebellious. I hear what you are saying. You are speaking to the church. I am part of the church and I hear what you are saying. I hear what you are saying. I'm not a rebel. I hear what you are saying. I hear what you are saying. Go ahead and pray. strategies right now that God revealed to me and then we'll take some time and really pray. I want us to seriously pray tonight and God will grant us that grace. Are we together? If you fight economic empowerment get set to struggle spiritually. Promise made a statement when he came to receive the offering and he said having abundance of supplies will increase your prayer life and minimize your prayer points. How true you see, let me tell you something. This system that we live in, Cosmos, is a system that was designed intelligently. Are we together? God made the heavens and the earth, but the system, the social strata, and its civilization was nicely modeled and built by Lucifer, the custodian of the Antichrist system. And he built it such that our civilization will only thrive on economic empowerment. Please listen. Are we together now? And part of the imbalance that we're talking about is what has produced believers who are prayerful, loving, but we have not paid attention to our finances. And in this season, our flaw is becoming obvious. Are we together? Many anointed churches are seen right now that they cannot buy generator for their prayer meetings many churches that will have to depend on rent or something the man the landlord may be an unbeliever and he may get up under the influence of a strange spirit and say no more use of this venue it is locked and what happens the sheep is scattered it's a strategy by the pit of hell because the bible says the borrower is and will always be slave to the lender so our concept of empowerment must be seen not just as a desire to be rich and to be money mongers. Please get this. If that is your thinking, you are already in error. The concept of empowerment is to rise to a level where we overcome the influence of mammon. That spirit that is, is compelling the nations to worship her. There is a spirit. It's called mammon. If you have not seen that spirit, just look around our government and you will know that that spirit is being worshipped. The obsession for the worship of images and the worship of Lucifer did not start in our generation. Right? Remember when the king built 90 solid feet, go and said at the sound of music, everybody will bow down and worship. And your survival in that territory depended on your willingness to bow. Some gentlemen said, oh king, no. They found another system of exemption and they changed the tide. Businesses are bowing already. Churches are bowing already. Systems are coming to their knees. I've heard men of God who didn't used to talk about certain things and have been surprised hearing the way they are beginning to be so obsessed 
about financial principles that are not consistent with the ways of the Lord. And the reason is because for every leader, what faith is to the realm of the spirit, that's what finance is to this realm. You must pay the school fees of your child. Are we together? And that reality is beginning to punish a lot of people to the detriment of their spiritual life. But everybody said there is a way out. Shout he said there is a way out. The way out of financial hardship in this season goes beyond investments, goes beyond business. Let me tell you what the Holy Ghost told me. You see, if you do investments, you need money to make money. Is that true? You need money to make money. If you do business, you are selling products, you are selling services and that's all right. But the problem is that the products you are selling have a fixed price and cannot be manipulated ordinarily. Are we together? Meaning there is a limit to what can come into your hand. There is a limit to patronage and all of that. But the key, I've said it again and again, is when you become the product yourself. Not just that you offer services, you become the service. When you become valuable, not just have things that are valuable, but you yourself as a person, you rise to a point where you become an epitome of value. You have entered your financial Sabbath, I guarantee you. The most expensive commodity, for instance, on earth is the anointing. And when you have the anointing, we used to jokingly say it sometimes with a Jimmy, how that we watch people who we know do not know one, maybe one twentieth of the business principles we should know. But because they possess the most expensive commodity on earth, which is the anointing, and its ability to provide supernatural solutions, they exempt themselves from the tide and the grip of mammon. So God's call for us in this season as believers to exempt us from the economic turmoil that is whipping the nations and that will inevitably come and lash a lot of people in Nigeria is not only to surround ourselves with valuable things. Valuable things are important, but be the value yourself. And we have that advantage because the Holy Ghost is here to help us. That's why I said your greatest business strategy in this season is to labor in the spirit and carry something authentic and supernatural you will enter the sabbath of your life do you believe what i'm saying please believe it i can sell palm oil is it not when you need palm oil that you buy it are we together i have palm oil in industrial scale but until there is a demand. But you see, let me tell you something. The, rev the world revolves around certain things that will never uh, run out of demand. One of it is the anointing. One of it is the realities that come from the life of a man in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Such that even in your business, you are offering much more than the product first and foremost you have risen to a point where you have become so valuable then any other valuable thing around you only becomes a support not the basis for your confidence do you understand what i'm saying as harsh as the economic climate is there are people moving as if it doesn't exist in nigeria please don't ever deceive yourself that everybody is crying. Let me tell you why we all look like we are crying. Because people have found out that if you don't cry with others, the, the anger and the pain, they will fight you back. So they just cry and say, Kai, honestly, God is, is faithful. But the truth is not everybody is crying. There are people who are far from crying. They have found the key. Every one naira that seems to disappear did not go out of earth. It's somewhere. Is in the hands of those who have paid the price to become valuable. I made up my mind that as God grants grace, I will pay the price to be so valuable. Because by God's grace, my life and this ministry should not come to a point where we are stranded and the purposes of the kingdom becomes jeopardized simply because of a, a God called Mammon.
Look at me. Do you know that there are many of our families we have tried to bring them maybe for the meetings and they may not want to listen. But how many of you know that if we buy something tomorrow and we say everybody should come and line up? Vim, Omo, sewing machine, bikes. You will see people who swore that they will never come here. You see them standing. Even if they will not use it, they will get it and go and sell it and quickly use the money. That's the reality of economic hardship. And from the vision the Lord showed me, listen, people will do things that you will not imagine. Do you know in the Bible, women ate their children? The Bible says, can a mother forget her child? This one, a mother remembered and still ate the child. That's what finances can do. You talk about prostitution is child's play. When poverty hits people, they will make calls that they, they had not made for years. You see, if you do not empower your people, don't blame them for perversion. And I found out that you do not judge spiritual seriousness just from the face. You can see someone praying, but knows that there are seven people whose daily bread are dependent upon them. They will go and sleep with any allergy anywhere and bring the money. They will even bring it and so project 10,000. Are we together? Say in the name of Jesus, I exempt myself from this economic hardship. Say it in the name of Jesus, I exempt myself from this economic hardship. The Bible says when men say there is a casting down for you, it says you will say there is a lifting up. There is a lifting up. There is a lifting up. But if you don't believe this, sooner or later, you will have to face the bitter reality of this prophetic word because it will happen. I want to be honest with you. I'm not one person who just prophesies everything I see, but I, I, I salute the government of this nation. I know that they are doing their best with what they know and whatever covenant they are part of, but I, I want to tell you one truth here. I don't see transformation happening very soon. Let me tell you the truth. All that, I've, and, and I, I, I don't mean to insult anybody, but a lot of people have given so many prophecies, you are going to see boom, not 2016. It will happen for those who have the strategies. But as far as the world is speaking, you have not seen tears. Wait till July finishes. I've, I'm telling you what I've seen. You will see people sit down and cry like children. I'm not talking of illiterates. You will sit down and gather your degree and shed tears on it. But for those who are hearing this thing and will pay the price to become valuable, I tell you, you will rise as if the devil does not exist. It has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with level of education. Hear me. It has nothing to do with gender. It has everything to do with having perceptions and receiving God's strategy for now. Don't sit down and confuse yourself saying this and that. I'm an astute businessman. Just keep quiet and let the Lord speak to you. I'm not daft. I understand business. If you hear me speak to you like this, it is what the Lord is saying per season. Let me tell you, what will give you bread is what God is saying, not what you know. What God is saying, the direction of God is the direction of favor. The direction of God is the direction of life. It's God speaking to us. You must challenge yourself to be valuable in this season. The devil is a liar. Kai, the devil is a liar. There is a spirit in Asia called Quatsi Quata. That's what the Bible calls Mammon. It's a spirit. Many of you have seen it. It's the image of a flying serpent, a flying dragon. That is the exact picture of Mammon. It's a spirit that will compel the nations to bow to its leadership. I assure you, many people will bow. The concept of 666 is not just something you receive on your hand and receive on your forehead. It's already happening. When a system compels you, 
receiving the mark is not just having a physical inscription is coming under the sovereign rule of that system so that you have no options you have received the mark are we together but God is going to grant us grace we will come out in another dimension no 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 listen let me tell you I don't know about you but koinonia will not bow to this system there is a superior covenant we have the rod of a higher priesthood no devil no spirit no system will make us change our message to tone down the apostolic work God has given so that we can attract certain kinds of wealthy individual that's what is happening to pastors right now there are certain messages you cannot preach if it is not rich man friendly get set to sweep your church by yourself so you have to tone down certain things there are certain mainstream TV programs right now where you are not permitted to teach certain topics it used to be that you can't mention the name of Jesus but now they've taken it to another level certain topics should not be taught on mainstream if you teach about pressure how to manage it how love how people can can come together a gospel of universalism marry anything anyhow anywhere doesn't matter you are you are welcome the mainstream invites you but the moment you have an outspoken voice the system will strangle you and economic empowerment lack of it is satan's weapon of mass destruction it's worse than backsliding are we together pray in one minute and say i must be exempted in this season please pray 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 are you praying oh every time the devil tried to bring his arsenal and fight the church God is always one strategy ahead one strategy ahead one strategy ahead one strategy ahead Keep praying. Your banner high, we shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Now, I tell you, we will not bow. Hey, we raise your banner high. Shine your light so bright. We sing in all of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in all of you. The grace to be valuable. That when men say there is a casting down the bible says your gates shall be continually open it will not be short day or night right that you will receive the forces of the gentiles that's what the bible says you can be valuable 
and exempt yourself from the economic whiplash hear me i'm not talking of business i'm not talking of investments i'm talking of being so valuable carrying something that cannot be found in the earth realm carrying something that is not of an earthly origin hallelujah please sit down sit down I told you there will be lots of impartations we will pray my passion is that something will come upon your life listen let me tell you something brothers and sisters when this glory of God comes on a man it will change you you will veto laws and walk as if Satan does not exist. Never trivialize the anointing. It's a big deal. I'm not talking of being anointed where you are competing with people and fighting. No. God raises you by his grace and puts you in a pedestal. No mammon. No devil. No policy affects you. It's a realm. It's a dimension. We frown at the supernatural because we think we're in an intellectual realm. Many times when pastors speak, a lot of business people just say, these guys are daft, they don't know what they're saying. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The voice of God. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. That is why I will not want. The Lord is my shepherd. A shepherd guides. He knows where the green grasses are. He says, he leads me. He leads me. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. Isaiah 48 verse 17. Right? I am the Lord that teacheth thy hands to profit. some of you this is what you will need you will step into a place and men will look for you who said where you are staying is too far you have not carried something when you carry something listen let me tell you when you know you are anointed when no price is too much to meet you you are really anointed when no price is too much to meet you have you watched people during foil scarcity they have their money but they still kill and they are not angry that's how valuable foil is when you get to a point where people don't mind trekking from anywhere to say i have learned that the wisdom of god is upon your mouth and we have come as a nation that's where joshua selman is going to Koinonia is not an exclusive reserve of preachers. Power was never for preachers. Power is for them who will survive in this season. Because there are gates that you must stand against. And it takes the anointing. It takes unction. Not stories. Not preaching. Unction. Listen. Churches are closing because there's no results. We argue and say it doesn't matter. But they are closing. The devil is closing them. The devil is closing them. People are coming in with devilish policies against the church. You know why? They have not seen our relevance. By the time a city cannot do without the church, no devil will close it. No devil will close it. Listen. So the key is not just making noise the key is rising to that point please hear me 
when you become valuable, listen, listen. If I give you 500,000 to go and invest, you can make money. If I give you a product to sell, if this is 100 naira, everybody you sell to, you will sell at 100 naira. So you move at their pace. But when you become valuable, your reward is left to the perception of your benefactors. One person can see you and give you 100,000 because that's what he perceives. The next person can give you 10 million because that's what he perceives. It's the key to accelerating ourselves to enter that wealthy place. Let me tell you, some levels of businesses are too slow to supply the funds required for kingdom advancement. It takes being valuable. The queen of Sheba, there was no watch on Solomon. She carried her treasure to Solomon. There are Shebas, there are Cyruses that must arise with their treasure. And I'm praying prophetically that someone tonight, an unction, an unction, an unction from the throne, an unction from the throne will come upon someone that will change your life where your voice becomes like the voice of God. Listen, let me tell you this. There will be no longer begging in the church. All that depending on the world system. No! The key is not to sit down waiting for someone to employ you as good as that is. The key has been given to us. The Holy Ghost handing you the keys that can open any door and you will watch mammon. Mammon will watch you and not be able to do anything. Listen, I saw this in the vision that the Lord showed me. Many people will be constrained. They, they are like, it will be as if they should die because the doors are closed. Let me quickly talk about the two points. We're rounding up. There is a key that will conquer exhaustion in this season. Please, write it down. There are many weary people and it's natural to be weary. But let me tell you the key. Please hear me. I want you to write it. It's a very simple key. Spend time praying in the spirit. Spend time, I didn't say pray in the spirit at will, carelessly, when you want. Spend time praying in the spirit. I want you to fan your prayer life in a dimension that will be too hot for any devil. Bishop Oyedeko said, no matter how mad a man is, no matter how mad a man is, he will not enter fire in the name of madness. Are we together? You want to survive the tides? Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, your prayer altar must be like the seven times hotter fire that they threw the Hebrew boys. The Bible says those who threw them themselves were burned to death. Are we together? You lie down on your bed, you turn a little shakata bakata batata. Where your prayer creates an effect. You enter your house as you are shouting in tongues. Something is happening. You are shaking gates. Prayer, read your Bible, has always been the key to true apostolic and prophetic revival. When you pray, let me tell you, no matter how dead your spiritual life is, when you invest in prayer, you will burn that devil to nonsense. He must give you more. I don't mean prayer that you are just asking and begging and crying. That's why I said pray in the spirit. Because for many of us, our prayer in understanding is petition and languishing and pain and anger. But you lock yourself. And you pray. I'm not just saying when you are in your prayer room, you are moving on the road. You are praying beneath your voice. Somebody drops a charm at you, it backfires on him. By night he has become mad. Are we together? Someone is carrying a talisman and you are sitting down and you are going to Sabo. He will drop at main gates because the fire is too hot. He 
he makes listen he makes his ministers win spirits right his angel spirit and his ministers flames i've said it again i pity the herbalist that will make concoction and call my name as is it's not only that it will not work if it didn't work he has still insulted me he will fry to death physically physically i'm not i'm not motivating you you think they've not tried it how can you be leading a ministry like this and not tried it only god knows till we get to heaven before we know how many poisons we have eaten let me tell you something when your prayer life is alive and healthy anytime you are walking just imagine in your head fire literal fire are we together john wesley said set yourself on fire and the whole world will come to watch you burn set yourself on fire stop discussing things with people who cannot help you go and lock yourself your body says i'm tired you say you are joking as you begin to pray you will first feel weak for a few minutes keep praying it's normal just keep praying when you touch that escape velocity you will touch a realm where strength you cannot explain will land upon you you plan to pray for one hour you will stretch five hours believe me i know what i'm saying nobody starts praying just out of comfort it's like you are starting shake it you are tired you are moving you are tired keep praying don't say ah this and that the devil will tell ah, there's something in the fridge have you don't just keep praying Oh, apostle, I'm praying and thinking about women. Keep praying. That's what it's supposed to solve. There is a level to which the fire will be too hot. Your flesh must burn and allow your spirit accent. Listen, when the Holy Ghost is called fire, it's not just what we do in church. Fire, fire. No, it's real fire. Fire is a mystery. Those who will pray in this season will record unbelievable breakthroughs. Believe me travel you pray in the spirit thank god we have a very robust prayer department you come there and stretch it out with destiny after two hours your antenna is to the heavens any demon is flying above you they hang there they hang there because you are passing you are not even praying the fire will roast every devil around anywhere that's what we are talking about listen many of us are too cold that's why the devil will come and sit on your destiny and it will look like nothing is happening there are cold churches a spirit will arise from somewhere and just come and sit upon the man of god and his wife and his family but for koinonia no way shout no way, no way. fire when there is fire burning somebody will come with migraine as he's crossing that 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 junction to enter koinonia the migraine will just leave that's fire speaking that's fire speaking it works but if you walk it it's not a gift it's a labor in the spirit this is the labor dimension of spiritual growth men will pay you let me tell you your 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 job is to just become genuinely anointed by the power of God and you watch what God will do in your life it's what a Jimmy calls transformational wealth that dimension of wealth that is tied to people rewarding you because the last time they shook your hand every gate opened every every gate opened just by shaking you do you think they want to be your friend absolutely absolutely praying in the spirit becoming valuable praying in the spirit becoming valuable the third key in this season is the power of corporate fellowship the power of corporate fellowship if the devil can successfully isolate you in this season just know that you are quarter to die are we together there is a difference between isolation and solitude once the devil wants to destroy you let me tell you what he will do look up please he will use offense huh and push away everybody every intercessor in your life you will fight with him every 
nobody who has grace and love for you, you will fight with him. He will push every relevant person, push you to the wall alone. And then that's where you sit down there and become a victim of his assaults. A corporate life is a powerful key in the realm of the spirit. The power of a corporate life. That you come together and where I am almost giving up, as you land with your fire, based on unity of faith and the spirit of brotherhood, before my fire jacks up, your fire is roasting every devil that I came with. Are we together? Corporate fellowship. How good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that flows from the head of Aaron. That priest down to his bed, down to his cat. He said, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing corporate life i'm a man of god of myself you will pay for it in this season you need corporate grace corporate grace corporate grace because no matter what you have seen you will need that sometimes that corporate grace will help you confirm if the path you are walking is of god the devil can isolate you and you just keep moving and you are flattering yourself until you land in fire are we together? But Koinonia, we are going to pray. I don't know about you, but for as long as you are genuinely connected to this ministry, you must be exempted from this nonsense that is ravaging nations. It's like an angel of death is is entering families. Bam! Sickness, incurable diseases. Have you heard recently how people are dying just from headache? They say somebody has headache before they rush him to the hospital. He's dead. How oh, come on? A woman is pregnant. Just when labor starts, she becomes deaf and dumb. Then she dies. We are going to drive that devil out of Zaria. Are you ready to pray? No, we are going to pray. There is a church in Zaria, and we will pray. We will pray and drive it far and say we surround this city with a mystery that makes any enchantment not to be able to thrive. We represent God's seat of, of governance in this city and we must pray. There's no room for carelessness. We must pray. Lift your voice and pray in tongues for a while. Make sure you participate everybody. Don't be tired. We are praying. Young and old, everyone pray. Zaparapa dosoto preka teke rebeka dosh. Enkrete seka te barada barata kashiga de barada ba. Rante ke te prosoto paka rada barada barada ba kasa baka te preka de barada bosh. Zike te ke te karata kata frada kada barada ba ka. Zapaka raka dosoto preka te. Enkrete te kusoto koto barada barada ba. Are you praying? Hallelujah. Anointing. Sing it as a prayer from the depth of your heart.
Hallelujah. Listen. Our family members are depending on us, not our preaching. The activity of the power of God upon our lives. There are people standing here. Let me tell you, listen. This thing that I saw, there are families I know. I saw it happening to in that vision. And I like you to pray. You are not desiring the anointing out of covetousness. You need it. There are, there are thrones and dominions that must be subdued. And Apostle Joshua Selma may not be there. The goal is not to have one superstar. The goal is that you carry fire and go to your regions and begin to speak the purposes of God. And while you are doing that, God will compel men to lift you. It has nothing to do with ministry. Please, I'd like you to pray and say, Father, let a strange unction fall upon my life. Oh, let the earthly become heavenly. Let the earthly become heavenly. Let the earthly become heavenly. In this season, they that will survive must be men of power authentic unction unction beyond imagination unction beyond argument unction beyond argument unction beyond argument ta 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 ba ta ka para ka ta lord send that fire upon my life send that fire upon my gifts send that fire upon my degree send that fire upon my phd send that fire upon my business send that fire upon my company send that fire upon my church Send that fire upon my family. Oh yes, send that fire upon my life. Send that unction upon my life. The earnest expectation of creation awaits my manifestation. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time. 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 Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. One encounter with the anointing can give you an open door that your lifetime will not exhaust it if you believe what I'm telling you. One encounter. One one encounter can open a financial door for you that will wipe your tears one encounter can make you a friend to somebody who will pay your being a friend with him forever one encounter listen listen hallelujah i'd like you to pray a prayer you've heard us pray it here but i want you to pray it with all your heart everyone appointed to reward my grace i compel them to appear go ahead and pray it's not enough to have an anointing there are men who can reward your grace there are institutions Shapakata 
Zapokoto proskoto pekete. Send them, oh God, to Koinonia. Send them to your people. Men and women who need what you carry. Your entrepreneurial anointing. Your leadership anointing. Your spirit of motherhood. Send them to my life, oh God. Men and women who have what it takes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, look up. Look up. I know very anointed men and women. They love God passionately, but they have never met the people assigned to bless them. You don't preach for money. You don't carry the anointing just for money. But you see, God designed it in such a way that as you dispense the realities of the kingdom, there is a feedback system that should empower you so you continue being effective. Are we together? Listen. The day you stand in the presence, you see, many of us are around people who love our gifts but do not have the grace to reward it. Are we together? You can labor and pray and fast and go and preach somewhere and someone will pat your back and say, wow, you are an awesome man of God. I've never seen a man of God in this state like you. That's not enough reward. But there is a way you can have an encounter and someone will come and bring a generator, buy you a car and say, what does it take to stop you from thinking about the finances? If you are such a voice, I should sponsor you rising to any level. There are men like that. There are some of us, the value you have now, let me tell you sincerely, the value you have now you, is, is enough for you to be blessed forever. But you have not encountered those who have what it takes. Listen, there are pastors, hear me, who until you preach somewhere where your helpers are, that's what will expand your church. All of a sudden, it will be like they are hearing you for the first time. Yes, I know there are millions of men of God in Nigeria, but there are others assigned to honor you, you, you. You can be singing, singing songs, laboring and traveling from pillar to post. But if you can discern, God can send you to somebody who has the means but needs your music. When it was time for the lifting of David, a spirit was upon Saul. And Saul needed a musician to drive it. All of a sudden, they went and fished out David. How many times did David play for Saul? When he played just once, Saul loved him. There are circles that I have entered. And I ministered once. And God connected me to people who will bless me forever. And that day, it wasn't even as if I was saying anything. It was just that God connected me to people who will be blessed tomorrow we're in Asaba a mighty meeting happening in the stadium and we're going to minister they started preparing for this meeting tomorrow one year one year they came to book one year in advance they have been praying logistics publicity all over the city and we're going to go and storm the gates of hell there is some you are not assigned everywhere Look, you need to pray that those assigned to honor what you carry. Otherwise, you'll be frustrated trying to be everything to anybody. Lift your voice one more time and say, direct them, oh God. Direct them. Direct them to me. Oh, in this season, direct my blessers. Direct those you have sent to be blessed by my ministry. Direct those who have been sent to be blessed by my business. Shabakata Bosh on the Prosa Sike Ruta Sabarikata. Direct them. You are a prophet, but not to everyone. That God will bring the ears of those who have been anointed to hear your voice. You are an apostle. Not to everyone that God will direct the people, the institutions. (laughs) 
Aleluya. We're going to be praying that in this season, please hear me, that in this season, God will grant you grace to have passion for the house of God. That you will not allow the devil corner you somewhere and destroy you and destroy your family. He said, as for me and my house, I don't know about you, but as for me, I have made up, but the Bible says, they that be planted, no flimsy excuses. Oh, we are tired today. They that be planted in the house of God, they will flourish in the courts of our God. I'd like you to pray passionately and say, Lord, grace and passion for your house. Grace and passion. Grace and passion for your house. Supernatural grace. Supernatural passion for your house for your house for your house hallelujah hallelujah we are rounding up one category of people who will be exempted from any nonsense in this season are passionate and addicted soul winners listen listen there was a time they needed money to pay for tax. It was a period that they needed money desperately. They had come to collect tax. And Jesus said, go and catch fish. And fish in the Bible is symbolic of souls. When they caught those souls in that mission work, they found money. As they were preaching, God provided a way. As they were preaching, fishers of men they went to fish and they said open the mouth of that fish as that fish testifies the greatness of god and confesses with his mouth the lordship of christ you engage a law automatically that brings you wealth hear me please believe what i'm saying there are many people here who love god we are prayer warriors but we are not so winners you stand up alone and drag yourself to koinonia you wave your roommates you wave your family members you come here and get blessed while you are getting blessed the devil is using them to destroy your blessing you go back home a soul winner is an intercessor lord you must change my family members there are people who can come on friday and say look i'm going around this place have you heard about koinonia you've never really come you see this this our shame big boy big girl there are no big boys and big girls in the kingdom it takes passion when you are doggedly involved in soul winning you schedule seasons of exemption i can tell you this i can tell you this are we together you are in your office you are there and you leave every other person someone tells you uh -uh, um the devil is trying to manipulate my life. Oga Jordan did something today that blessed me so, so much. Some people came to his shop to buy books. And the way they began to talk, at once he knew it was a demonic situation. God has given you spiritual intelligence. There is a way you hear people talk. What they are saying in the realm of the spirit is, I need help. You just listen to them and say bye-bye. The moment they began to talk, you know, Oga Jordan said this and that. They wanted to see me and he said, oh, it may not be easy to see me. But he bought communion and took a bike and came and said, I should pray on the communion. And returned it back and gave the people. And I was looking at him. I said, why won't he explode? Let me tell you, if God, if your life becomes an epitome of support for God's interest, forget about begging. This is the God I serve. You may not know all you need to know. But that your life can find space to bring God. This is how this ministry started. Every night, somebody was dragging somebody. Come and get filled with the Holy Ghost. Come and get born again. You may not have the power to change them. But you have what it takes to invite them. Some of you, 50 naira is what you need to draw a soul. Ah, Koinonia has a crowd. It's not about competition of crowd. It's about destinies that must change.
Are we together? What's wrong with calling your loved ones and say, there is, there is a platform now to hear this online. Since you think you are too sick to come, connect to the miracle service. You see, let me tell you something. This is what we do that produces some of the results. Anybody that is too big to win souls is too big to experience the favor of God. If you are too big to win souls, too big to win souls. Ah, I preached and they insulted me. So what? Didn't Jesus say it? Blessed are you when men persecute and revile you. Rejoice! For so they did the prophets and the rest. You have social media platforms that you can use as platforms to draw people to the house of God where they can be blessed. You see, until you see yourself as part of what God is doing, you are not entitled to his blessings. When you see yourself as somebody who just comes for koinonia, leave the workers and the ministers. When you exempt yourself, you also exempt yourself from that covenant of blessing. He said, if you are the children of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham. I'd like you to pray before I speak over our lives. Lord, grace to be intentional about saving people from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Grace to be a conduit for someone to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Grace to be a channel for someone to receive the teachings that will change their life. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I want to pray for you. And I want you to believe it. Praise the Lord. This prayer is, is not just, I know that I pray in partitions every time. Don't you think you are getting the same thing? You see, one thing with grace is when it comes. Yes, I know that some of us, it's not yet time for manifestation. But you can begin to do something with it. Are we together? One day, instead of dragging somebody to go for prayer department prayer, before the prayer department, teach the person on the baptism of the Holy Ghost and try to lay hands on the person by yourself before you go. Everybody must have room to start something. If someone is sick, don't just say, here is apostle's number. Here is head of department prayer. Here is sister head of department. Here is a Jimmy or Pastor Femi or Pastor Alpha or every, any, any other person. No, you can tell him, look, I agree with you. I am part of a family that has a healing anointing and I want to agree with you. If you pray with the person and nothing happens, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Everybody you see had an occasion to begin to exercise themselves. Anointings are useless if you are not ready to use them. God does not waste. He said, gather the fragments that there be no waste. Are we together? I want to pray for you. There are three things I'm going to pray for you. The anointing for uncommon wisdom. That's the first thing I'll pray for you. Let me tell you, I know many foolish people. It's not by age. I have seen this ancient wisdom upon my life. As young as I look, I have seen it. I know it is real. I saw it in people. I coveted it with my heart. And the day it landed upon me, I knew. The anointing for wisdom. Strategies. Two, the anointing for favor. You need favor in this season. Favor is not when you do things by yourself. Favor is when God raises men to do things for you. It's not about having money. It's about the appearance of men in your life to wipe your tears. It's called favor. Number three. The supernatural power of the Holy Ghost to provide solutions to people. There are sick people. There are oppressed people. Waiting for Joshua Selman to heal everybody is idolatry. That's not God's design. God's design is that you become an extension of what we represent. That when we cannot be there, you can arise. 
they tell you a woman is failing to give birth you lay hands on her stomach and ask her to give birth there and then no cs it has nothing to do with being a pastor or being a prophet you don't need to carry any ministry you just need to carry the spirit of grace lift your hands the spirit of wisdom spirit of wisdom there is a level of wisdom that is beyond age it's not found in the realm of men it comes from heaven job was asked a question when cometh this wisdom where is it where is it they ask the place of the dead and he says it's not with us we don't know where it is he said only god knows the place thereof hmm? whose price is higher than rubies he said does not wisdom cry her price is far above rubies right he said by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness i pray for you in the name of jesus the grace for supernatural wisdom uncommon wisdom let it come upon your life in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus from today you begin to function at a frequency of wisdom that no man will begin to gain say or resist number two the bible says all who saw esther loved her favor there is such a thing as favor there is such a thing as divine supernatural not man-made arranged favor favor from strangers when those who know you favor you it makes sense when a stranger is moved by the holy ghost to serve the purposes of god in your life your business and your ministry then you know that that's favor receive that grace for favor receive that grace for favor receive that grace for favor listen some of you before the end of this night strange testimonies strange testimonies you are thinking of buying a bible someone brings it you are thinking of buying something someone brings it now that's favor you are looking for a place to pray someone says i have my room anytime you need to pray i give you that's favor you are trusting God to travel for a meeting somewhere. You are stranded in cash. Someone says, I will sponsor you, pay for your flight and bring you back. Receive that order of testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, it will come upon you. Believe me. Believe me. You will carry it bodily and go out with it hallelujah the last prayer lift your hands this one will come upon you big listen we need miracles signs and wonders the ministry of miracles has not ended signs and wonders the sick healed the oppressed delivered you command breakthroughs in the lives and destinies of men don't just waste words as you speak to people you influence the realm of the spirit to provide solutions for people lift your hands father i pray over your people that ordinary life that ordinary preaching that doing things ordinary from today step into the supernatural Step into the supernatural. Step into the supernatural. The unction for signs, wonders, and miracles. Let it come upon your life right now. The ability to see, the ability to speak the prophetic word of God. Ay, 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 ay. It will come on some of you. I release it upon you. In the name of Jesus. Listen. Some of you from today. As you stand close to people. 
just contact with them it will be like a register open in the realm of the spirit receive that grace in the name of jesus for you are god alone from before time began you were on your throne you were god alone and right now through the good times and bad you are on your throne you are god alone for you are god alone from before time But you are still in 300 level. Let me tell you, if you wore a matriculation gown, you will wear a convocation gown. I'm not motivating you. This is a prophetic message from the depth of my heart. I show you a secret that where is Satan. When I found it, that Satan had a weak point. Consistency. Where is him? consistency does not mean you will not be tired you are humans but with the tears in your eyes you are saying i will continue lord you seem so far away a million miles on what it means today and though i haven't lost my faith i must confess right now that it's hard for me to pray that's someone's testimony right now but I don't know what to say And I don't know where to start But as you give the grace We all that's in my heart I will sing I will pray Even in my darkest hour Through the sorrow and the pain I will sing I lift my hands to honor you because your word is true. I will see. Hallelujah. I asked a gentleman to come here. He was about committing suicide from what he told me. Just a few minutes before Koinonia started from aviation. He called me and said, I'm about to take my life, I'm about to kill myself. And I said, come for miracle service. I hope he's here. Let me tell you something. You want to bring joy to the devil? Let him watch you cry in weariness. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's greater than death. Let me tell you, Satan's ultimate desire is not death. That torture pleases him more than death. He likes to see when people cry in defeat. So this is how my life will be. So I went to school for nothing. I paid school fees for nothing. So this is how I will not get married. I'm 39. This is what is going to happen in my life. Oh, so this HIV is true. I thought it was joke. But right now, I'm coming to terms with the fact that I have six months to die. And the devil loves that. That's exactly what he wants. But when he finds people like us who say, Lord... <laughs> blessings or no blessings you have done something to me ah the moment you hear bad news before it lands you attack it with tongues and the devil will say till now and you say you are joking you've not seen anything else when you are about to be weary another strength comes he dug a well and they covered it he said no problem we will dig again dug another well and they covered it he said no problem I learned a lesson from the ants my toilet has a little compartment and I started noticing ants because of the rain 
they were trying to make a house somewhere there. Are you getting the point? I deliberately refused to pour water on them because the Bible says we should learn from the ants. I'm not a fool, but I'm wise enough to learn from them. I kept watching these ants day and night. And I think when, I'm tra when I traveled, I'm sure my people that work for me came and just cleaned that toilet and washed everything. But I was surprised. I thought they would cry. When I got back, I found out they had started again. I said my message for tonight, consistency. Consistency. Have you seen men who you thought it was their end? And after two years, Mama, are you still alive? He said, I'm still alive. Oh. I told you I would not die. At a point in time, family members will even discuss and say, look, let's just encourage her. I think we should release her. Mama says, you are joking. I'm not going anywhere. I don't know what the devil has put as a load upon your head and has spoken to you that you will never see the other side of the miracle. I want to announce to you that today, today, that situation must change. Are we together? Yes. Not everybody here is here because they are sick. But I tell you, more people have gone through hell from January till today than they have in the last 10 years. Walk on the road and see people talking to themselves. You think they are talking to you until you wave them and you find out they are not even seeing you. Frustration. They are about to give up. I don't know how many car accidents we saw today. And we did not see the other car that was hit. Meaning the person threw himself. Out of frustration. The devil. There is a plot from the kingdom of hell. To weary believers. And make them think God is not faithful. Because that's the whole goal. News after news. Bad news after bad news. And at a point you sit down and say Kai. Is this thing working? Whether I eat my tight or I pay it, I found out that the same result happens. Nothing. Let me tell you something. It's the waiting process that takes time. The manifestation comes speedily. Learn this. Manifestation does not come with time. It comes overnight. Overnight. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning. New mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, to me. I want you to make two decisions tonight. One, that you will never complain and grumble again. It looks like an impossible situation. But I want you to make that determination. That from today, I will never find myself opening my mouth to say, God, why? Why me? Why not you? Who else? Make a decision today. Hear me at this miracle service. That you will never complain again. That you will tell yourself, my God is good all the time regardless of my experiences this is how i am you will never hear me open my mouth and say god why now i wanted tea only sugar came can you bring bomb vita and hot water no god you are faithful at all times are we together the bible says a merry heart do it good like medicine right Make that decision. Decision number two. Make up your mind to be ever thankful. 
ever thankful not when you get a testimony make it a lifestyle many of us thank god when they give you a testimony oh a new shoe just arrived a new tie just arrived you must make up your mind let people believe that every day is christmas or new year for you because of your attitude of gratitude people come to your house and you say lord i thank you because you are faithful thank you for abundance you are a good god and your friend says i thought you said you just have gary no sugar you say exactly say somebody just sent you an alert Abi. no my god is faithful that's how i am in nigeria yes that's how i am give thanks with a grateful heart give thanks god is ministering to you to the holy Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given. Jesus Christ Sing it with faith in your heart And now Let the weak say I am strong And let the poor say I am rich Because of what challenging you to make decisions that will keep you consistent number one avoid complaint nothing slows down consistency nothing produces inconsistency as a life full of bitterness and complaint and grumbling let me tell you something murmuring is sin murmuring is not just wrong write it down murmuring is sin you find out from scripture how people perished for murmuring the bible says they limited the holy one by murmuring complaining lord you should have done this lord you should have done this and uh -uh, make a decision under god advise yourself that I need to be consistent and I will never find myself murmuring and complaining again that does not mean everything will be a bed of roses I tell you challenges will come but you must make up your mind make up your mind that you will not murmur number two thanksgiving I told us that's the second decision that will make you consistent in life thanksgiving whether you have a reason to be thankful or not, find a reason. One of our dear ladies in Lagos, we were at their house yesterday to visit with the family. And um, I think I've shared the story. She may even be following online right now. This lady about three years ago, during her birthday, her friends just poured... Um, I can't remember what they poured now. Caustic soda. And the lady became blind. On her birthday, her friends, careless friends rejoicing without sense, poured caustic soda. And now the lady for three, four years now is blind. But let me tell you, I've not seen a human being happier than that lady till yesterday. I promised her that the next time we were in Lagos, we would visit her. We were so tired yesterday, but I made up my mind to visit with the family. And when we got there, she was blind. When she felt my hands, she was shouting, ah, Apostle, she was so happy. They were the first people to give me a birthday gift. Lovely father, lovely mother, lovely everyone. And the lady was so happy, joyful. Never for once did she tell me, Apostle, but will my eyes open? 
it seemed as though it was not even her business. She was talking to me that she was going abroad because she was in 300 level when she went blind. So nothing for schooling again. She was saying, Apostle, I want to go abroad and study psychology and counseling. And we're laughing. That's a blind person. A blind lady who would have planned to be married maybe by now. Supposedly her destiny shattered. Is it not when your eyes is open that you can see money to collect? Very happy lady. She challenged me sincerely. I thought about that experience even while we came today. I said, my goodness. That means... Your circumstances do not have to determine the extent of your joy, your gratitude. You can choose to respond instead of reacting. Oh, this is unfavorable, but God is still faithful. And Lord, I thank you. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Say it from the depth of your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When you thank God, you frustrate Satan. Thank you, Jesus. I thought my, my pension will come. It's five years now. But I thank you. You are still faithful. I thought we'll be able to complete the house in 2014. But till now, we've not even lifted it to lintel level. But I thank you that I have a land. I may not have a structure on it. In one minute, can you find everything God has done in your life and tell him thank you? Forget about what he has not done. If you do not have anything, you are a liar. Go ahead, mention them. Go ahead and mention them. Lord, you are faithful. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for life, for strength, for health. Tell him thank you. I may not have a house, but I am sane enough to even think of sleeping. Are you grateful, Koinonia? Those outside, for some of you, this is your miracle. As you are thanking God, you will find out that that sickness is no more there. It responds to gratitude. Lord, I may not have money, but thank you, I have an account. That is ready to receive your favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Decision number three. That will help you become consistent and persistent. Is to walk in love. Walk in love. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Once there is no love in your heart, you just punctured the tank of your destiny. Get set for an empty tank. The moment there is no love, it's better that you do not have faith. It's better that you do not have faith, I guarantee you. When all else fail in your life, make sure your love does not fail. Love. The antidote to offense. You will find men and women who will be sarcastic. They will say things. Ah, are you aware that that woman is barren? In case they've not told you, know it now. It's been eight years. All the children you see in a house are adopted. When you hear such a news, it can break your spirit. What if your own friends let you down? What if those you trust, you committed secrets to them about your life and they dashed it on the floor? Let me tell you something. The Bible says, blessed are you when you are not offended. There are a thousand and one reasons to be offended. Believe me when I tell you I have no offense in my life. There is no man on earth that is in any blacklist. I don't even have it. I'm a happy person. Every list is white. Vision and fulfillment. No blacklist. Now, as a leader, you can imagine how people treat you every day. From waking up to all kinds of things. 
on the road, someone wants to jam you and then he's insulting you again. And you now turn and tell him your father or your mother or whatever it is that you want to use. And then you quickly remember that, ah, there's miracle service today. Now, Are we together? People can be so foolish, they can annoy you. People can be so careless, they can annoy you. Your loved ones can be so insensitive. But you must make up your mind today that you will walk in love. Walk in love and watch how cheap Satan is. Watch how the mountains before you will melt like wax. It says love never fails. Everybody repeat it after me. In Nigeria where we are looking for insurance and guarantee, I give you one. Are we together? Many insurance companies will come and say, come and work with us. Do business with us. We are 150 years old. We can insure you. We can insure your life and your car. I found something in life that does not fail. Greater than potentials. Love. Never. Not love can fail and then readjust itself. Love never fails. I give you the fail proof. The fail proof key to living. Walk in love genuinely and passionately make room for love in your heart towards people you don't like towards people who insult you make up your mind that forever the love of God has consumed me and you will see how the anointing will multiply in your life you will see how God will let me tell you I have used this in my life God has used love to turn mountains what my faith could not do, my love did for me. Forever I am changed by your love. In the presence of your majesty. Sing majesty. Majesty. Sing majesty. Majesty. Forever we are changed. Forever we are changed by your love. We're in, in the, the presence, presence of your majesty. I'd like you to pray for yourself in one minute and say, Lord, take away bitterness from my heart. That, 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 that spirit of bitterness and anger that rejoices when I'm afflicting pain at others. Oh, apostle, you don't know what they did to me. I don't care. I don't care what happened to you. Walking in love is a choice. Walking in love is a choice. Hear me, I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. You can choose to walk in love. I will never forget, forgive that woman till Jesus comes. Then you are not ready to see the power of God in your life. The third decision that can make you consistent is to walk in love. Anytime, every time, at all times. Hallelujah. Never allow yourself be a victim of communicating lack of love. I hate this person. Are you aware that I hate Pastor Alpha? Are you aware that I hate Mama? I'm just keeping quiet. The day his cup will be full. See, let me tell you, those who talk like that never go far. Don't you ever think you will compromise on the law of love and get miracles. Only herbalists give miracles without love. The, the initiator of miracle is love. He was moved with compassion. He saw them as sheep without shepherd. Although they were insulting him, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Love. Love. The last decision that will help you become consistent 
Are you ready? Is vision. Vision. The Bible says without vision, the people perish. The word perish was not accurately translated. The word there is to cast off restraint. In other words, to veer off from a path. Vision. And nothing keeps vision like the memory of the prophecy that backs it. Nothing keeps vision like the memory of the prophetic word that came with that vision. I may not remember what I said, but God told me. I remember. God told me I would build that house. I remember what he told me in 200 level. That I will be a PhD holder. God told me. Prophecy is powerful. It keeps men consistent. The moment you are about to gas out. A prophetic word comes. And God says what did I tell you before you got married? Did I not tell you after four years I will lift you? You are just in the third year. Don't give up. My word still stands. And it supplies strength. And you can fire on. What did I tell you before you would start that business? I told you that I will lift you. And so you stand. Many of us forget the prophetic words upon our lives. We trivialize it. Now I know that we live in a generation where everybody is a prophet. Somebody just sees you and says something that is not worth remembering. But I tell you when you hear something that is of God. There are things God has spoken about in my life. I even forgot them. When they happened, I went back. I had to go back and check my notes. And said, my God, you said this. You said this. The first time God spoke to me about koinonia was 2005. I wrote it down, but I didn't pay attention. So when God spoke to me about starting it, I think it was last year or so. I was going through all of my notes during my retreat and I saw it there. I said, my goodness. When God speaks, hear me, he is worth believing. Whether you have any evidence or not, just believe him foolishly. God, you said by December I will own a house. This is June. There is no land available. I have 5,000 in my account, home and abroad. And God says, so what? I never told you you will buy the house. I said you will have a house. There are many ways to have a house. It can be given. Someone can lack his sleep and God says, this is the man to bless. You know, many of us don't believe God can move in these dimensions. I believe him. Absolutely. I believe him. Are we together? I believe God with all my heart because I know he is faithful. There are things he has said to us as a ministry. There are things he has said to me as a person. I have watched one by one. One by one. And there are many more that will come to pass. I want to ask you a question. What has God said concerning your life? What prophecy has come upon you? As a family of faith, God declared unto us that this is our year of what? Multiplied grace and influence. God saw fuel crisis when he made that statement. God saw the dollar nose diving, the naira nose diving when he made that statement. It's up to you to remain consistent or join those who are making noise and perish with them. God's obsession is to be trusted. He wants to be trusted. Are we together? If he said it, I believe it. If it does not work, at least I won't die. But I know that I believe him. Do you believe God? Let me tell you something. There is nothing God will tell you that looks possible. If God tells you something that looks possible, you didn't hear him. Because God speaks from his realm. He will never tell you what is possible. Your brain and your job can tell you, save to 200,000. In five months, you have one million. Go and buy Toyota Camry. That's your brain. But God says, I will give you the treasures of darkness. And he said, God, how? The how is none of your business. Here's how the Bible puts it. He said, just as you do not know the way of the wind, nor how bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child, so also you do not know the way of the Lord. 
God works in mysterious ways. Are we together? Somebody called me. He's getting married next month. And he said they did the budget. They, they updated it and it was 2.7. I said, how much do you have? And he said he has 40,000. And I said, don't, don't laugh. I'm, I'm, listen, he's not an irresponsible person. I can tell you this. It's just that he, he's in a situation right now and he needs a miracle. And he said, man of God, will this thing come to pass? I said, you even have 40,000 and you are complaining. Ask those who had only five loaf and two fish and were about to feed 5,000 people immediately. Time was not given. Immediately, five loaf. I love Jesus. What a man that inspires me. Five loaf and two fishes. And he said, ask them to sit down. If you don't believe God enough to sit down, no bread for you. You have to, you have to prove that you, sitting down means be at rest. Because your standing is, let me watch in case it doesn't happen. Let me quickly dodge. And God says, I don't walk like that. You must be still. Then you will know that I am God. You can't be busy and say, Lord, be proving it while I wage my faith. Because I'm used to you disappointing me. No. Ah, I love Esther. If I perish, I perish. Are there such people this night? Men who will believe God. I'm motivating you and speaking over your life to continue and be consistent. Who told you it will never come to pass? The person who is laughing at you is also on earth trying to figure out his own life. What confidence do they have? It's like two people, you are writing exams and the person is laughing and saying you are sweating, Abby. Whereas he's writing the same exam. Is he not foolish? I'm speaking to somebody here by the spirit of the living God. That the Egyptians you see today that have mocked you, Kabakasuta Pratika Pariata. The Egyptians you see today, you are not the first to see Egyptians. This man standing before you lives with Egyptians. It's not that I saw them. There, there, there is a level you get to as a leader. You don't conquer challenges, you walk through them. They are they become your companions. <laughs> Ah, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he says, I fear no evil. He says, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Then he says this, thou prepare. You are not in a hurry, you are taking your time to prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. We are going to pray. God is ministering to us. Please, I want to challenge somebody. Go back and hold that thing you were doing and continue. I don't know who asked you to stop that business. I know what stopped you. Pain stopped you. You opened the shop and everything dried. Go and open it again. Let them laugh at you. Go and open it. When you succeed, they will bite their words again. Are we together? Yeah. Don't mind Nigerians. And their sarcastic way of laughing people out of destiny. That's why only few people ever succeed. Are we together? The Lord is asking me to prophesy to someone here. That you should go back to what he asks you to do. God asks you to put your hand on that plow. I'm speaking specifically concerning work and career and business. There are people God directed to certain things. But because of your pain and failure, you are saying, look, um, I, I want to follow the path of least resistance. That's the path of failures. Are we together? Yeah. Never allow pain stop you from being consistent. Never allow the mockery of people. While they were mocking Noah, he was busy building the ark. While they were mocking him, after 90 years he continued. 100 years he continued. After 120 years, God said, Noah, get into the ark. I'm about to send the rain as I said. 
God told you this year you will hold your first million and you are saying God this is June this is June and God says don't insult me I am more than able to wipe your tears it's up to you to believe God oh this year you will get married God as I'm speaking to you right now there is no man in my life the last man who came came as as careless as he came that's how he went and God says it doesn't matter how long does it take to settle you let me tell you it doesn't take time to marry it just takes vision and finances once there is no money you shift dates when God brings his blessings he brings every resource to make it happen are we together God said you will be gainfully employed this year is June and the last place where you were holding on to Air Force just came out day before yesterday your name is not there are we together the person who would help you just called and said look young man um, I thought we'll be able to fix you up at Shell or Chevron but I'm sad to announce to you even us we are standing to maintain our position. And then you will know that by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. That's the time to hand over to God. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with me. It is well with me. I believe. time Lord I standing by my side to bring his word to pass he reigns our God is an awesome rise up on your feet he reigns he reigns he reigns yes he reigns and say Lord I challenge unbelief I'm a believer you are not a liar when you speak you bring your word to pass are you praying inside and outside I believe you I believe you, I believe you, I believe you, I believe you. Manda Brata Shabarada Baladaba Kosa Pradiga de Baladaba. Go ahead and say, Lord, I believe you. You are not a man that you should lie. You are not the son of man that you should repent. I hold on to prophecy. I hold on to prophecy. Ah, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to open your mouth and cry before God. Tell him what must happen in your life this night. What you are tired of that must leave you today. Not tomorrow. Lift your voice and pray. Don't be a doubter. The power of God is able to touch you and change your situation. You've had the testimonies of others. Pray, pray. Is part of the meeting. Tonight, I hold on to the four horns of the altar. Don't stop, you are praying. The Lord will do a quick walk here tonight. Change my story, oh God. Change that genotype, oh God. Open up that womb, oh God. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Have your way. Heal and deliver in this place. Heal and deliver. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands, everybody.
Tonight will be an extraordinary night. It will be very fast. What the Lord will do. Very fast. The message is what you have received. Very fast. I like you to expect miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, no instruments. Stop. Just lift your hands. Just lift your hands. That's the instruction God is giving me. Lift your hands, everybody. I want to pray. I want to pray and I'm hearing the word breakthrough. That's the first thing I'm praying for. Listen, please. The moment I begin to pray that prayer of breakthrough, I want you to bring everyone under the anointing for that word. For some of you to surprise you the way the power of God will come upon you. I tell you, the moment the power of God touches you, know that this prophecy is for you. I hear the word breakthrough. Breakthrough. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I don't know where they are. Right now. Kabarakato zabarikata. I stretch my hands across the length and breadth of this congregation right now everyone under the influence of this prophetic word right now, right now, right now the first overflow outside right now, right now right now, breakthrough there is an angel of the Lord identifying men breakthrough bring them in breakthrough kata la kata it's time for you to step into levels of breakthrough 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 i prophesied as i mentioned that word the grace the anointing is visiting you that stumbling block leaves you now breakthrough 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 angels of breakthrough i release them across this congregation right now in all the overflows the thousands following us online Breakthrough, the power of God is touching you right where you are, right now. Right where you are, breakthrough. Shaba katala katia. Mande brake si kataya. The Lord will do a quick walk tonight. A quick walk tonight. He's touching you without delay, without delay. If it's your case, God visits you at once. If it's your case, God visits you at once. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. That's what I hear in my spirit. There are still others. There are still others. I see another wave of anointing coming. Breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. That's what God is bringing right now. Breakthroughs. We'll be very fast tonight. Our time is gone. I tell you, there is enough anointing for anything you want. It's going to be a fast word. The Lord told me once, I mentioned the case. His power moves. I hear delay in my spirit. Get ready. Keep playing, Mike. Be sensitive, please. The strings. Right now, everyone under the influence of the spirit of delay, delay just for delay right now right now like a string cut from you right now like a string cut from you inside and outside i command that spirit to leave delay 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 any destiny here under the influence of delay you can't stand it you can't stand it is the anointing of the holy ghost destroying delay that embargo of delay you are caused by the God of heaven caused by the God of heaven caused by the God of heaven the spirit of delay I curse you over God's people this is a miracle service delay that has kept you down that has kept you down that has kept your family down hallelujah lift your hands everybody the lord wants to visit families the second overflow outside i see the lord touching men as i begin to pray right now every family under any embargo at the count of three fire falls on you now one two three take that fire 
take that fire take that fire take that fire inside outside embargoes over families embargoes over families take that fire take that fire take that fire by the message of the God of heaven take that fire take that fire take that fire is coming on you like rain like the dew of heaven take that fire hallelujah hallelujah I don't know who this mama is but madam an angel of the Lord is touching you right now as I'm speaking to you fire is coming upon you an angel of the Lord right now right now right now right now oh god once again confirm this call and anointing hallelujah 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 i'm seeing several gates opening hear me and the lord said this is the womb of many people please i want to pray for you right now the lord is opening barren wombs that's what god is showing me whether miscarriage or no children completely i don't care what it is lift your hands for you and for your loved ones lord in the name of jesus let the power to perform be released right now every barren womb for you and your loved ones i open it right now right now right now right now i open every barren womb i open every barren womb right now every barren womb be open be open be open barren wombs be open barren wombs be open barren wombs be open barren wombs be open be open will you open up the gates the gates open up the doors i command every closed door over your destiny open up the gates the gate open up the door say after me in the name of jesus shout it in the name of jesus every gate and every door over my destiny be open right now open your mouth and begin to pray be open there is an anointing to open it every gate every door kaparakata kepere shopa tele katu separia fire is burning in this place i command gates i command doors be open now i command gates i command doors be open now i command gates i command doors be open now hallelujah say after me in the name of jesus every chain tying my life stopping me from making progress in the name of jesus chains be broken open your mouth and pray i break that chain i break that chain kabataya it's time to move forward by the power of the holy ghost by the power of the holy ghost change
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. I want to challenge powers. I tell you, there are spirits that sit on the destinies of people. I believe that the prayer I'm about to pray for you right now will challenge this spirit. Hear me. There are men, there are women under the influence of strange spirits. That's right. That will stop them from advancing. But right now, at the count of three, everywhere in all the overflows, Father, I pray, once again, validate this anointing. Once again, validate this apostolic and prophetic call. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus and I command every spirit to leave. One, two, three. Right now, right now, every power, every spirit, every power, every spirit, out of them now, out of their destiny now, strange spirits, strange spirits, like fire, it comes upon you. The refiner's fire setting men free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. Lift your hands. I tell you, I feel this thing on me right now. Ah! I want to pray for you. Watch this. The Lord is showing me a vision. And this is what I see. I see stones and I see fire falling on it. And the Lord says, these are the altars that have kept destinies down. Hear me. If you belong to this category, physical fire, physical fire will come on you. That devil must give way. Right now, I stand upon this apostolic call. I stand upon this prophetic call. Right now, fire 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 on every devil fire on every spirit fire on every altar let it burn 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 every altar let it burn every altar release God's people Release God's people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm prophesying. I see the Lord giving certain men direction. That direction will come like an anointing you are asking god what should i do where should i go right now where are they oh god the power of god is coming on them that's direction you are receiving direction right now wherever you are direction is coming direction is coming direction is coming confusion is ending direction on ministry direction on career direction on marriage it comes to you right now right now by the anointing direction is coming 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 hallelujah hallelujah the lord is giving me an instruction that we should pray in the spirit for five minutes intensely just do what i'm asking you to do something will happen to you go ahead blast in tongues for the next five minutes 
Regina Regina Fire is burning in this place The Lord is going to do a quick walk Quick walk Mighty walk No power will stand tonight No power will stand tonight I command every power Hallelujah Hallelujah Listen Listen, listen to me. You know, bad days are times when unusual requests are granted. It was during Herod's birthday that the head of a prophet went. Are we together? The best way to celebrate your birthday is to dethrone principalities and powers. Every spirit represented here, I'm saying it again right now. No matter where you are hiding, I stand under this apostolic and prophetic anointing. If I be called and sent of God right now, at the count of three, on your mark, get set. Go, 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 go. Out you go. Out you go. Pack your load, pack your failure out of their destinies. Hallelujah. Regina, you are Regina, ma. Please come, come on. I have to pray for you. I'm looking at you, ma, and I'm seeing the spirit of death upon you. Don't, don't, I'm not, I'm not a prophet of doom. I look at you and I'm looking at a corpse like somebody that has died. I'm seeing uh, what they call it, um, um, cotton wool in the nose and the ears as I'm looking at you physically. And the Lord is saying it's time for your miracle. I don't know what is wrong with you. Come, walk to me, man. Hold my hands. Right now I command that spirit. Your time is over right now out right now be gone now be gone right now out 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 by the power of the holy ghost it's time for this woman's deliverance who brought her who brought this madam what's wrong with her come talk to me Oh, chronic leg ulcer. Ah, I see it here. It's not healing. What is it? It's rotting or something. It's rotting. It's refusing to dry up. That devil. Madam, you feel pain on your legs? Pain on your legs. You believe God will heal you? A spirit just left you. That's what they call leg ulcer. And the reason, I don't know if they diagnosed you, but I'm looking at you, and I'm not even seeing a woman healed of ulcer. 
I'm seeing a woman healed of diabetes. Huh? That's the cause of this thing. That's why it's not here. I'm not a doctor. I'm just telling you what the Holy Spirit is telling me. This thing is diabetes. And that's why this thing is not healing. Stand up. Walk. Carry her up. Oh God, help your mother now. Why are you watching? Madam, look at me. In the name of Jesus Christ. No, no, you don't have to lift it. I bring life to these legs. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Don't look at the legs. Move it. Move it. Go ahead. Don't be afraid. Just look at me. Move it. Go ahead. Move it. Move it. Walk. Come. Come to me. Come. Come. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Look at this. Go ahead. Lift it up. Look at this. Look at a miracle happening to her. She's still under the power of the Holy Ghost. A miracle is happening to her. In the name of Jesus, lift it up. That devil goes. I command it to dry now. Not later. Right now. It dries up. Dries up by the power of the Holy Ghost. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Lord Regina. Hallelujah. There is a lady from Kogi State. Right now, I don't know where she is, but you will locate her by a shout. I sincerely don't know what I'm saying. It's under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. There is bondage that has been for so long in your family. And God is saying today, you are, you are set free. From Kogi State, one lady. Fire will land on her wherever she is. Whether it... Where is she from? Who knows her? Where is she from? Eh? Is she from Kogi State? Bring her out. It's time for the salvation of your family. I stretch my hands on you and I challenge every altar standing against your family. They must let you go right now. Right now. Release her. I stand by an anointing and I, I challenge you. You are living right now. The Lord of Sabaoth brings judgment upon you. In the name of Jesus. Right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Release her life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 I don't know what God is doing with Kogi people. I'm hearing Okene, 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 Okene. Okene is a place in Kogi state. There is a visitation coming to that territory. Right now. People who belong from that territory. An anointing is coming right now. I'm not saying you should clap. I'm saying you should receive right now. I don't know where they are. But all those from Okene, I release an anointing right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Inside and outside. Strange visitations. God is bringing visitation to that territory right now. If you are from that place, that name is a code in the spirit. It locates you wherever you are. In the name of the Lord Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, everyone, stretch your hands towards me. I see something. Hallelujah. Please hear me. Stretch your hands towards me. I see something like medals being given to people. And the Lord is saying, as this medal comes, He's increasing the grace upon their lives. Like medals. That's what I'm seeing. And the Lord said, You should stretch your hands. I release my hands back to you right now. Not everybody, but there are people wherever they are. Shatabata. Rise, rise, rise. Rise in the spirit. Rise in the spirit. Rise in the spirit. Kabatatatikete. 
Hallelujah. Prayer HOD. Come and hold your hands of your assistant quickly. Come and stand, two of you. Hold your hands and lift it up. A new grace. The gifts of the Spirit is coming on both of you right now. Strange gift. The Lord is saying is the season for you to begin to walk in the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. Lift your hands. I see gifts falling on people. Gifts falling on people. Gifts, 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 gifts. Gift right now. Gift. Help them, please. Help them. Gift. There are men of God receiving gifts. Men of God. Men in ministry receiving gifts right now. I activate it. I activate it. Kapatayada. I activate it right now, right now. Gift. Gift. The prophetic. Gift. The prophetic. Gift. The prophetic. Eyes to see. Yes to hear. Eyes to see. Yes to hear. Kapa shakata. Patikata di kabaritos. Job said there is a part which no eye has seen. The wealth of the lion has not gotten there. Hallelujah. I'm still praying for gifts again because I see it. Hear me. There are many people you don't hear me pray this prayer but I hear word of knowledge there are people who need to step into the revelatory gifts of the spirit wherever you are I stand upon this anointing receive it right now revelatory gifts revelatory gifts revelatory gifts ay, 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 ay. revelatory gifts kapatata rakatata abarata I stretch my hands step into that level the word of knowledge the gift of prophecy the discerning of spirits Hallelujah. 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 I'm looking at a vision the Lord is showing me and I'm seeing the exact color of my dress and the Lord says it's a mantle of favor. Listen, it's going to mantle people right now as I speak. Please hear me. Lift your hands. Favor. It's a mantle you can wear it like a garment father i pray there are people this is the miracle you need that mantle of favor across this building the overflow the next overflow online right now on everyone everyone under the sound of my voice may mantles of favor come upon you right now mantles of favor come upon you right now Lord on everyone let no one be left let no one be left wear it like a garment wear it like a garment wear it like a garment let it open strange doors for you hallelujah hallelujah our time is gone we have to be fast my goodness Now listen, before we pray for the sick, there's no time to just pray and ask them to come. 
And so we'll pray for the sick. But before we do that, if you have your prayer request, lift it up. This is very strange what the Lord shows me. Usually, we bring it out and lay it here. But the Lord is asking, please, if it's in a phone, maybe your loved ones wrote it, leave the phone up. It's not, we're not playing games. Please, please, don't come and waste your time. There is a God that answers prayers. My dear, come. You are Regina. I have to pray for you. Because the Lord is telling me that he wants to end captivity in your family. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a lot of suffering and pain in your family. And the Lord is asking that I pray for you. Number one. Number two, for you. The Lord is saying I should tell you. It stops. I don't know what is that. But the Lord is saying it stops. From today it stops. Hold my hands. Father, bring your word to pass in the life of this lady. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Over your family. I command that that pain, that captivity comes to an end. And for you, the prophecy is that it stops. I don't know what it is, but I stop it right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. It stops. Kaba Shiba Ratusia. Ende la rusa pras kubarita shubriata baladaba. Those online, I know that there are hundreds of prayer requests. No problem. The media department is stretching it by faith. Those outside, don't worry, you will lift it before we submit it. If there's something you should write and you've not written, you will quickly write it before we pray. But the Lord is just asking me to lift it up. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray on it. And the Lord says for us to hold it and just pray in tongues for just a minute. Seriously and violently on your request. Are we together? In one minute, just speak over it. Are you not the God that answers prayers? Lord, when you speak, it may look foolish. When you speak, it may look foolish. But we choose to be foolish in obedience to your word. Pray! Answers are falling. Answers are falling from heaven. Just in one minute. Answers are falling. Answers are falling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please lift it up. Lift it up. I want to speak over it. The Lord is going to open the eyes of many people here as I pray. And you will see the requests on fire. Physically. At least I see seven people having this experience. Physically. You will see fire. I'm not saying physical fire. I'm saying when the Lord opens your eyes, you will see it as though burning. That's what is going to happen. Father, you have given an instruction. We are foolish enough to obey you. Right now, upon this request, the fire that brings performance. The fire that brings answers. Let it begin to follow God on prayer requests right now. Let the fire that brings answers fall on them. Turning the requests into testimonies. Turning the requests. Kabashikata. Ente karata. There's authority in this place. Turning the requests into testimonies. Hallelujah. Now begin to forward them to the ushers. Please ushers quickly start collecting them. While they are doing that, please be careful with those in front. Some of them are under the anointing so don't match them. You are here trusting God for healing. Specifically, I want to lay my hands on you now. Make your way to the front. You came with a sick person. It's time to bring them to the front very quickly. As we worship in your presence, there is healing. 
the Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing. We believe. I like you to believe the Lord. As we worship in your presence, there is healing. Let your faith be alive. The power of God is already touching people. It's flowing, Jesus. We Hear me, please listen. I don't care what the name of that sickness is. You must refuse and insist that plus your hair falling, you must be healed. Are you hearing? Don't say this one is not serious. Uh -uh. When you are coming here, insist and say, Lord, from my head to my toe, I must be healed. As we minister to you by the power of the Holy Ghost, the anointing is already touching people. Some of you, we may not even need to come close to you. It's the power of God. While that is happening, I want everybody in the congregation, we are going to maintain an attitude of prayer. No carelessness and gisting around. Begin to speak to God concerning your prayer request. There are so many people who are proud to tell you this is a place of healing. In every city and in every territory, God must find a place where he can extend his healing power to his people. The Lord is showing me all kinds of infirmities. HIV, diabetes, tumor, breast lump, breast lump, a lot of breast lump. The Lord is going to heal you. Hallelujah. Jimmy, please come. We're going to pray. Listen, there is the anointing upon him. Come, Jimmy. There's fire upon my hands, and I want you to touch that anointing. Go ahead. That anointing. That's what the Lord says. I should tell you to touch my hands and touch that healing anointing, that healing power. Miracle worker. Ah, you are the miracle worker. Come and do a miracle. A miracle today. Come and do a miracle. A miracle today. Father, please heal everyone here. Everyone. And for those you are standing for, you have the photos of any everyone. Don't worry. While we are coming, just show the photos, whether it's phone or whatever. We will lay hands on it. Believe God. Please, no commotion. As we pray for you, just gently walk to your seat. Because of time, we don't take instant testimonies. Please forgive us. But make sure you are praying. Don't just stand looking at others carelessly. Let your heart be open. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead. Help us. You made a way. Stretch your hands towards the prayer requests. And begin to speak over them. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead. Those those being prayed for, don't worry. Just focus. We're praying for you. But everyone, pray on the request. Out right now. Stretch your hands on the request and pray. I command the spirit of death to leave you right now. Please stretch your hands. Make sure you are talking to the Lord. We are not just whiling away time. You can move the mountains. Prophesy and say, Lord. Visit me, you will visit my request. Savior, you can move the mountains. My God is mighty to say, He is mighty to say.
into wine. You open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Let's have There's right none now. like you. Be free in the name of Jesus. I set you free by the power of the Holy Ghost. Leave her right now. Go forever, never to return. I command that spirit to leave her. Ashes will rise. There's no one like Out. you. Out! Out! Right now. There's none like you. Lift your voice and say, Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. for your patience. It's called the miracle service. Please stretch your hands here. Those still on the healing lines, don't worry, Jimmy will handle you. Please stretch your hands. Let's save time very quickly. Prophesy, we're not wasting time, please. I want you to understand the nature of the service and what we're doing. Outside, in any of the overflows, just stretch your hands and let's trust the God that heals. Go ahead and pray. Shabarako subredika shabriata. Are you praying? Prophesy. Lord, we declare the miracle walking power of Jesus. 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 Go ahead and prophesy. Lord, I declare that these requests are turned to testimonies in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus we declare we declare we have brought them before the altar they will never return to your life you have handed it before the altar it will never return to your life you've handed it before the altar of God it will never return to your life Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to do three things very quickly. Very, very quickly. I'm going to speak over our lives right now. 
immediately after that we take the altar call our time is gone but even if it's two minutes we have to give people who are making commitments for the lord hallelujah lift your hands everybody and receive the final prophecy these prophecies are powerful that's why you hear people returning back with testimonies the prophetic words change lives in my opinion you've heard me say it again and again i believe this is the most powerful part of the miracle service not everyone may come out here not everyone may fall under the anointing but the prophecy can come upon everyone in the name of jesus christ these egyptians that you see over your life over your destiny i declare that by this miracle service you see them no more forever I declare that you see them no more forever you see them no more forever you see them no more forever in the name of Jesus everything that has delayed you the level you are supposed to have been I don't know what that level is but I don't know what stop you from getting to that level right now between now and next miracle service run with a dimension of speed you have never experienced run with a dimension of speed you have never experienced run with a dimension of speed you have never experienced I pray for the works of your hands that has refused to grow in the name of Jesus I declare the month of June and July months of supernatural increase that which is upon your hand is compelled to grow in the name of Jesus Christ the kind of favor you have not seen from beginning of this year to this mid-year I command in the name of Jesus you will experience it you will experience it in the name of Jesus the Bible says revive now thy work in the midst of the year in the midst of the year it says revive now thy work I don't know what has gone cold in your life maybe your prayer life maybe your word life but by the message of the God of heaven, I pray, let there be revival for you right now. Supernatural revival for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before danger shows up in your life, may God give you the eyes to see. Before men conspire against you may God open your eyes to see hallelujah where men have said you can never get to the embargo they have put on your destiny I tear it out of your life in the name of Jesus hallelujah I pray for every student here that unction that anointing that gives men capacity to be extraordinary I command it to fall upon you right now I command it to fall upon you right now for all final year students there is a finishers anointing the grace that grants men access to finish in the name of Jesus as you push this one last time may the heavens push with you may the heavens push with you in the name of Jesus Christ every disfavor every bad luck everything that does not represent the aura of favor in your life I drive it far from your life in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus whatever makes money run away from your hand whatever makes it to change direction when it's almost getting to you I command that spirit to live your life forever. I release abundance of financial supplies to you. Abundance of financial supplies. The spirit of fear that has stopped you from rising up and doing big things. In the name of Jesus, as this month comes to an end, it drives that spirit out of your life. I will always pray this prayer for you. I call again the helpers of your destiny. 
I don't know how to make you believe the power of this prayer. But in the name of Jesus, may they appear in your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. I want to pray a special prayer for you. One of the blessings that God has given me in my life is unusual access. God has given me strange dimensions of access. Access to men of influence. Access to men of authority. I pray for you in this season. Whatever will connect you to men of influence, not just men who can help you, but men who have the ability to help you. May that connection happen in the name of Jesus. May that connection happen in the name of Jesus. Everything that has died in your hands, I don't care for how long, in the name of Jesus, I command resurrection upon it. I pray for you. The resources you have in your hand, grace comes upon it to multiply. Grace comes upon it to multiply. Grace comes upon it to multiply. In the name of Jesus. The presence of God that has distinguished men in this ministry. May that supernatural glory, that presence, may that aura go with you everywhere you go. Whoever has said no to you, I change their statements. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, I pray for your spiritual hunger. What good is it if you get money, you get all of these things and with it you lose your passion. That whatever you lose in life, may your passion for God not be one of them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything you submitted here as a prayer request, we turn it to your testimony. We turn it to your testimony. We turn it to your testimony. In this period of my birthday, as the Lord blesses me, I pray that he will bless you too. Believe me, I'm praying for you from my heart that whatever God does for me, by his mercies, the mercies of the God of David, may he do it for you. As God lifts me, may he lift you. As God wipes my tears, may he wipe your tears. In the name of Jesus Christ. The next time we're looking for men to stand and testify genuinely in the name of Jesus, May your testimonies be so heavy you cannot sit back there. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone called barren, go and return with your miracle children. Everyone called jobless, go and return with a miracle job. Everyone due for promotion, you had the testimony of prof. In the name of Jesus, may the God that lifts men promote you. Promote your loved ones. Promote you and your loved ones. In the name of Jesus. May you wake up in the morning and return back with miracles that will bring tears in your eyes. While you are sleeping, may God wake somebody to be wondering what to bless you with. Yeah, 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 yeah. our time is gone but receive this I say it again that while you are sleeping may somebody else stay awake wondering how to bless you every gift you have but there is no platform to give it expression so that it will bless you there are many of us who have potentials but those who need it, that access to them is far. I connect you to those who need your gift. I connect you to those who have the grace to celebrate you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. While others are walking, may you fly by the wings of the Spirit. May you fly by the wings of the Spirit. 
don't doubt the prayer I'm praying for you. Don't let the devil make you think he's just talking. I'm not just talking. I say it again while men are walking. May the Lord give you wings with which you will fly. Every family represented here, not just as individuals, as a family, return with your testimony. What you have been praying for to happen in your family, I declare that between now and the end of June, may you begin to record testimonies. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Two minutes very quickly. You're surrendering your all and your heart to Jesus. Please keep standing, no movement around. There are two sets of people I want to invite here quickly. Those who are saying, man of God, I love the Lord but I need his help in my life. And those who are saying, I have never even made that commitment. Please, let's rise as we honor them. They need to be encouraged. I know there are people like that. We don't want to cajole you. God has spoken to your heart already. Outside and in any of the overflows, make your way to the front right now. Please, we have one minute for this. God bless you as you come. Don't wait for the first person. God bless you. Run out. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. The Lord is speaking to you and he's saying, make your ways right. Make your ways right. It doesn't matter what you have done. God is giving you as many chances as will take to be restored to him. Make your way to the front. You need Jesus. The Lord is calling you. God bless you. Please, if you are coming, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up so that we save time. Clear the way for them, especially in the overflow outside. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. Lift your hands. If you are coming out, then join them. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you. We're hurrying up, but it doesn't mean we're joking. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you and I believe in you. Tonight, I surrender my heart. I surrender my life. I surrender my all. Take me, use me, anoint me for your glory from today. I am yours forever. In the name of Jesus, I pray that this prayer will be sealed by the presence of the Holy Spirit. You keep rising from glory to glory. Your love and passion for God will never diminish. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for answer of the altar call. Just Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching